Welcome everyone to Juno Sweet Just Coming to. So we're gonna check out a video entitled World War One Christmas Truth Silent Night um, Extra History. Thank you so very much for requesting this video guys. I'm loving the, the historic videos about the war and the world war now. So on so far, thank you for requesting. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. If you want me to react to a video, please leave a comment below. I will try my most best to react to it. Okay, awesome. Thank you so very much. Let's go ahead. Christmas Eve, yes. 1914. Mm -hmm. The war was supposed to be over by now. Ooh. This little holiday special is brought to you by World of Tanks. Use the invite code ARMISTICE if you're a new player who wants to check out the game. The Christmas Truce hmm. is one of the most poignant events of the First World War, a time when men rose up above the madness of the conflict hmm. and, for just a moment, saw each other as fellow humans. Wow. This is an event that definitely did happen. Really? Thousands of men laid down arms in the truce, but a century of retellings has also kind of sanded down its rough edges and oversimplified its messy reality. Indeed, this event wasn't just the result of pure human spirit and holiday cheer. It was a host of unique factors that drove these enemies to spontaneously declare peace in no man's land. And hmm. really, it may not have been all that spontaneous. Small armistices were happening every day. Oh. As frontline troops became accustomed to the rhythms of trench warfare, they learned that looking the other way now and then could bring a shred of safety and calm to their lives. Really? The armies ate meals at the same time, which became a daily ceasefire. <laughs> Patrols frequently wow. ignored each other, adopting a live and let live attitude. Hmm. Troops often shouted to each other across the lines. After all, the autumn battles had passed, and both sides were waiting out the winter. In reality, the weather was the primary enemy for both sides. Wow. The high water table at Flanders meant that the trenches were always filling with water, sometimes collapsing Ooh. and burying men inside. Soldiers leaned against the walls to sleep, trying to keep themselves out of the wet. Food supplies had to be hung up on dugout ceilings. And that winter had been particularly miserable. Whoa. Weeks of rain flooded the dugouts. The mud pulled men down like quicksand. Now, British Field Marshal Sir John French had noticed the hands-off attitude his men were developing towards the enemy, hmm. and so he ordered attacks in late December to boost morale. And this resulted in heavy British losses. Concerned about possible fraternization over the holiday, he issued orders that no unofficial you see the leaders? was tolerated. Some of this, morale was some much of this better over in the German troops. Leaders are all, they so... were winning. But many men were also experiencing their first holiday away from home. Mm. Knowing that this would be difficult, commanders brought Christmas to the trenches, shipping thousands of presents to the field. Each man received a gift from the Kaiser. Cigar boxes for NCOs, a pipe with the crown prince on it for the ranks. Hmm. The British, for their part, received a brass box from Princess Mary filled with cigarettes, tobacco, a Christmas card, and sweets. Whoa. And then there were personal packages. Enterprises sprang up on the home front, offering family members a chance to send gift boxes. Oh, that is awesome. British soldiers received plum pudding oh. and thousand count boxes of cigarettes. <laughs> smoke, German smoke, smoke. And Austrian troops were bombarded with chocolate, wow. and salami, and cone. Wow. Both sides received winter clothing. In truth, though, the gifts were kind of a nuisance. I mean, there was nowhere to put it. <laughs> Soldiers didn't have a place to store a thousand extra cigarettes. But that Christmas Eve delivered a Oh my god, my eyes! The rain stopped, and the trenches drained. The dry cold froze the mud into a hard surface, wow. almost like a floor. Snow dusted the countryside. That afternoon, the gunfire dwindled, and in some sectors it stopped entirely. Hmm. The weather just seemed too nice for it. Exactly. The Germans, stuffed with Christmas chocolate and cheered by the weather, started putting lit Tannenbaum up on their trench parapets. And then, the German line started wow. singing. Over on the British parapets, watchmen of the Scots Guard saw lines of lights along the enemy trench. Oh. At first, they suspected an attack, but then they heard an ethereal sound. That is so awesome. <laughs> Stille Nacht, Heilige Nacht, the original Austrian version of Silent Night. I'm gonna cry today. Sending a challenge, Guards Officer Lieutenant Sir Edward Holmes oh, wow. decided that they should drown this out with their own carol. The sides went back and forth, but soon the competition merged into a harmony oh my God, of the King is... and Old Lang Syne. The men began shouting humans. Christmas greetings across the line, jokingly at first. We are humans. A few even stepped out to talk. Pulse didn't know it, but the same thing was happening we up and humans. down the entire British line. 
Agreements formed. In some sectors, the officers met at the wire and shook hands, agreeing to cease hostilities the next day. In other areas, the ranks took the lead. Germans shouting across no man's land, English, tomorrow if you no shoot, we no shoot. At times, it was just one brave soul walking into no man's land, waving a newspaper. These overtures were extremely amazing. dangerous. This is Though amazing. Was breaking out in we are areas, humans. It didn't happen everywhere. One British we have the ability to, to love. With a machine gun blast. Some oh. armed soldiers were gunned down trying to broker this holiday oh. armistice. But in most sectors, the ceasefire held. This truce oh. mostly happened between German and British units. The French and the Belgians, whose countries were under German occupation, were less inclined. Oh. There were agreements to bury the dead and cease hostilities, but not as much fraternization. Yet a Bavarian unit held fire during a French mass, and both sides halted fighting long enough for a guest, a soloist from the Paris Opera, to make a performance. Really? British Indian troops, who were a bit unfamiliar with this whole Christmas <laughs> deal, saw the lit German trees and thought of their own holiday oh. of Diwali. They held fire, but also held position until some Germans tempted them out of the trenches with cigars and cigarettes. Soon the men were smoking together on the parapet. That Christmas night, the troops slept in sublime quiet. Christmas day dawned, bright and cold, the sky clear for the first time in weeks. To their shock, British troops looked across no man's land to see the Germans walking around on their parapets. Such a thing was suicidal in daylight, and that gesture of trust, more than anything, lured a few British Oh out. my god! It was heaven to at last stand up straight and walk on solid earth. Some had ventured into no man's land on Christmas Eve, but in daylight it was impossible to ignore the bodies lying between wow. the trenches. The two sides buried their dead in common graves, grieving side by side in joint services, listening to the faraway sounds of battle from other sectors. And that shared experience broke down the wall. Soldiers milled about wow. together in no man's land, swapping overabundant gifts from <laughs> British beef for uniform buttons, chocolate cake for barrels of wow. beer. They exchanged hats. One German barber gave haircuts. The men what? After all, they shared so much in common. They lived in the same <laughs> field. I same got it! And they were that is awesome! More. Besides, they were curious. What was life like on the other side? Who were these enemies? Wow. One British officer was perplexed to learn that his new German friend believed the armies of the Kaiser fought for freedom. That was impossible, the officer responded. We're fighting for freedom. Amid this, Lieutenant Hulse found himself talking to Lieutenant Thomas of the 15th Westphalians, who had something to pass on. A Victoria Cross and a packet of letters. An English officer had died in the German trench during the last attack. Perhaps he could give these to the man's family? Touched, Pulse removed his own silk scarf, a gift from home, and presented it in thanks. Thomas, embarrassed that he had nothing to give in return, sent a soldier to fetch the fur gloves that his family had sent. Up and down the line, men started bringing out footballs. Kickabouts broke out, with men from both sides chasing the ball among shell holes and sliding on the frozen ground. In one sector, a group of Highlanders challenged a Saxon regiment, who burst out laughing whenever a kilt flew up during play. But not all of this activity was goodwill. On both sides, a few used the gatherings to reconnoiter enemy trenches, and both sides used the time to repair dugouts. Of course, for some, this fraternization appeared false. Oh, a British soldier flashed his squad mate a hidden dagger, while another refused to smoke German cigarettes, fearing that they wow. might be poisoned. <laughs> when one squad of Bavarians discussed whether to meet the British, their corporal snapped at them. Such a thing should not happen in wartime, and wow. no German sense of honor left at all. They weren't surprised. The night before, the same soldier had refused to join the unit's Christmas service. Corporal Hitler was odd like that. But his disapproval reflected the general's view. This that's, that's was what exactly I'm saying. exactly the situation that Field Marshal French had That's feared. what I'm saying. Commanders dispatched senior officers to threaten disciplinary action and insist that the men restart the war. Wow. In some sectors, the armistice came to an orderly close. Officers from both sides saluted and fired revolvers into the air, signaling that, all right, the war was back on. In wow. a few places, troops resisted until nearly to New Year's Eve. 
but the generals would not have it. Wow. German command dispatched snipers to break the ceasefire. What? French ordered an artillery barrage, letting the machinery of war roll over the human connections of the front line. Like, tell this to leaders. Nothing like this Christmas truce would happen again. The generals wouldn't allow it. On Christmas Eve 1915, British officers ordered a 24-hour artillery barrage. Men who tried to form a truce were court-martialed. Machine guns drowned out German carols. Wow. But the generals needn't have bothered. The spirit of that truce was unique to 1914, a symptom of a young war. By Christmas 1915, those troops had experienced chlorine gas and creeping bombardments. Zeppelins were bombing London. The Battle of Verdun would end just before the holiday, leaving 750,000 casualties. Indeed, many of the men who celebrated in no man's land gone. that day would never see another Christmas. Wow. One of those unlucky ones was Lieutenant Sir Edward Hulse, who had sung carols and given a German officer his silk scarf. Wow. He died three months later while trying to save a wounded comrade. He was 25. What? And yet, Hulse is not remembered today. He was for 25 his as the or even commander. The letters that his friends published after his death. He and so many others are remembered for a victory so entirely their own. When a group of brave men ventured into the line of fire, <coughs> trusting their enemies not to shoot, and believing that humanity was better than the bonfire it had built for itself. Wow. Happy holidays, everybody. Wow. So he was 25 years. At 25, you're still young and have that child. Not childish mind, but that heart is still soft. Not like you in the 16. 60, 70, when your heart is hard, it's, if it's your heart is hard, if your heart is hard, at 50, 60, 70, it will still remain that way till you die. But at a young, a young person might easily still change their mentality, change their heart, their mindset, their way of thinking, a young person. So I, you know, I understand more why this truce occurred, because it's young people. You, <laughs> what? They did say in the video I reacted to about the falling of World War II that the average age was 23. Most persons would have been dead by 23 in this war. I mean, those, oh my gosh. We don't want this anymore. No more of that. I can imagine my young self going over and shooting someone, fighting for, 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 the, for the leader. What? No. Mm -mm. Sorry. This life is too short for me. I don't believe in this nonsense. Okay? The two is human. Human beings, you all need to sit there and negotiate your stuff. Think about what's going on. Think about what needs to be done. And one person needs to humble themselves. There's too much fighting. There's nonsense about having to sacrifice people for peace. Nah, we don't need to sacrifice people for peace. You all need to sit your ass down and properly discuss what needs to be done so that we can have peace in this world. Not killing people. That's not how it's done. There's all this nonsensical leaders. So them need to be removed because they want to. Why don't they send their own son and their mother in, in to fight? No, they want to sacrifice other people children to be killed heck no this they need to find a better way to deal with this world issue and all this fighting and all this disagreement the leaders need to humble themselves and people need to start electing humble leaders and stop putting people out to sacrifice your children and your family okay thank you so very much for requesting this video sorry i just had to let it out at the end there so subscribe of course to should switch just a commentary like us on facebook follow us on twitter if you want me to react to the video leave a comment below thank you so very much bye guys